Okay, Alexander, let's talk about an article by uh, Byron York at the Washington Examiner with the title, Will Democrats Accept Election Loss? New Report Says No. Now, Alexander, I'll let you get into the report in a couple of seconds, but I just want to preface what you're about to say explaining this mm -hmm. report, which says pretty much the Democrats are not going to accept an election loss yeah. and they will do everything they can to subvert the results of an election should Trump win. But the the essence of the story, I guess, the, the inspiration of the story that came to, to Byron York, who's an excellent uh, a journalist, one of, one of the best out there, is the news media cycle, the mainstream media news, me the mainstream media news cycle, mm. which has been harping on the fact that if Biden wins, there's no way Trump will accept that result. And they've been mm. running with this story and they've been hammering it in people's head. Trump would accept the results. Trump would accept the results if he loses. And this has been one of their very, very many talking points mm. about the evil authoritar authoritarian dictator Trump. But Byron York does a great job of turning everything on its head and showing that everything that the Democrats are saying is 100 percent projection. As always, whatever they say, whatever they accuse you of is projection. Yeah. So, Alexander, get into the story. Yes, this is, this is absolutely the case. I mean, one of the key points to say about Donald Trump is that he has never actually uh, um, uh, threatened He's never he said on the contrary that you know that he he's he's looking for a, a, a proper election and um, there's no indication of any planning in the White House or within the Republican Party to defy an election outcome. What Byron York has done is that he's actually uh, highlighted the fact that there is in fact a Democratic Party think tank. It calls itself the Transition Integrity Project, and it is a Democratic Party think tank, and it has published a report which actually discusses a situation where the Democrats refuse to accept an election outcome if Trump wins. Now, the situation arises if Trump wins in the Electoral College, and loses the popular vote. Now, this is, of course, what happened in 2016, and it's possible that it might happen again. But what is being suggested now um, is that the uh, um, Democrats, and this is all game planning, um, refuse to accept the result camp and uh, push Democratic governors in various states, and it's suggested Michigan and Wisconsin as possibilities. And I quote now from Byron York's article, to disregard Trump's vic victory, overrule their state legis legislatures, and send Bi Biden electors to Washington. House Democrats refuse to recognize uh, Trump's electoral college victory. The Biden campaign also comes up with a demand for concessions. So in, an, in other words, the Electoral College is subverted. Um, local governors, Democratic Party governors in um, states which Trump wins, like Michigan and uh, Wisconsin, overrule the local result and insist that the state's uh, electors on the Electoral College uh, then uh, vote for Biden instead of Trump. So in effect, overturn the Constitution. And this is a step towards um, abolishing the Electoral College entirely. Now that is, if you consider it, if you consider the implications carefully, that's, that's a revolutionary proposal. That is a proposal for overturning the Constitution of the United States and the system of uh, election of the United States. It means the governors of, the, of, of uh, uh, Democratic Party governors in key states, key battleground states, overrule the election outcome and substitute loyalties 
to the to their party, the Democratic Party, and to Biden for the uh, you know formal operation of the country's electoral laws. I, I and and this is apparently now part of an actual uh, you know gaming strategy that a senior Democratic Party think tank is actually coming up with. I, I find this astonishing. And it seems to me that this is what we ought to be focusing on, not on uh, uh, rumors about what Donald Trump might do. Those rumors are being circulated by people who want to de delegitimize him. And the reason they want to delegitimize him and to make it possible to carry out this kind of coup, which is what we are outlining here. It's a, it's a straightforward attempt to remove from office the president directly after he is elected. Right. I mean, taking a step back, this, this is a really interesting uh, article by Byron York, and it was really interesting how this think yeah. tank was, was operating here. Yeah. They came up with four scenarios yeah. of election of an election result. Three of those scenarios were pretty much were, were Democrat wins, Biden wins. One of them is an outright win on one end, and then on the other end was a Biden winning narrowly. And, and those were the, the first three scenarios that they came yeah. up with. The fourth scenario is the, the color revolution scenario, we'll yeah. call it. And that's the only scenario they came up with where in their minds, in their minds, Trump can win. And the only way that they think Trump can win is if something happens akin to what happened in 2016, yeah. i.e. an electoral college win, but a loss in the popular vote. Mm. And in this article, Byron York says this about the fourth scenario. And once again, I stress, this is the only scenario that in their tiny little brains, they can envision a Trump victory. They don't yeah. talk about Trump winning outright a landslide or winning the electoral and the popular vote. They don't even consider it. But here's the fourth scenario, Alexander, and you can comment. So those are the four scenarios. In only one did a candidate win a clear victory and the opposing candidate refused to accept the result. And the loser who refused to accept the result was Biden, not Trump. Yes. That is precisely the opposite of the Trump won't accept result speculation that has dominated the media in recent weeks. Even though Trump clearly won the presidency in that scenario, quote, the gameplay ended in a constitutional crisis with threats of secession and the potential for either a decline into authoritarianism or a radically revamped set of democratic rules that ensure the popular will prevails. And quote, once again, before you comment, Alexander, I want to stress this is a Democrat think tank, a Democrat yes. think tank yes. that calls for a revolution, a Democrat think tank yes. that says the only result where the loser will not accept the results is a scenario where Trump wins and the person that doesn't accept the result is Biden, the Democrats. They never once in their scenarios mention the fact that Trump won't accept a loss. Correct. It's incredible how their mind works. Yes. Can I just add a few points to this? Because, of course, it's important to understand that the Democrats are also changing or intent on changing the way the votes are counted, uh, votes, voting takes place and votes are counted. So we have a situation now where there will be uncertainty about the popular vote because we're going to have mail-in ballots, which is not standard in the United States. So we're going to have mail-in ballots, chaos about the voting. Democrats prepared to you know, um, overturn electoral college outcomes over a protracted time and uh, apparently prepared to back this with threats of secession by uh, Democrat-led states, secession from the union. I mean, this is a revolutionary scenario, and it's incredibly disturbing that people are talking about this. And you're absolutely right. The only plan to overturn a lawful election result comes from the Democrats, doesn't come from the Republicans, doesn't come from Trump. This is an actual plan. It actually, uh, you know, a strategy 
for doing this. There's no evidence that anybody in the White House has come up with any kind of planning of this nature. And I come back to this. If you're talking about a situation where it's alleged, stress alleged, that Biden has won the popular vote and Trump has won the Electoral College, that popular vote victory may not mean all that it means, you know, all that it appears to mean, given the tinkering, the, the dis disorganizing of the voting system that the Democrats are insisting upon by insisting upon mail-in ballots. So I could easily see a scenario based on this report where there's massive con confusion about the popular vote. Um, the results are taking days and weeks to uh, um, come through. Um, it appears that Trump has won the Electoral College. There are massive protests organized by the Democratic Party grassroots to refuse to accept this outcome. You remember, that's what a color revolution involves. It always involves people protesting and doing all of that. And we've seen how that can happen in the United States. We've seen it this summer. Test so, run. Test run, exactly. We have all of this going on. Um, we have governors in states where Trump appears to have won, uh, 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 overruling um, the electors and trying to put pressure to get, you know, the electors to or even substitute electors, to have Biden electors instead of Trump electors. And we have other states, Byron York doesn't name them, but, you know, California, perhaps New York threatening secession if they don't get their way. Hey, what kind of a scenario is this? I mean, it is a revolutionary scenario. And um, in the meantime, you have endless campaigns in the media, on television, by Democratic Party leaders insisting, and in social media, insisting that Donald Trump is already, already isn't a legitimate president. I've already seen people say that, use those words. So it, it, this is, it seems to me, a very, very alarming situation. And as you rightly said, you know, dry run, were all those protests we saw in the summer, were they a dry run? Is this what we're building up to in November? I cannot emphasize again too strongly for people who watch these programs, the stakes in November could not be higher. And let me again repeat, the point that Alex made at the start of this program, this is a report produced by what is indisputably a Democratic Party aligned think tank. No question about this. They've come up with this scenario and our reporting is based on what was written in the Washington Examiner by Byron York, who is not only a very serious journalist, but actually a mainstream one. He is obviously on the conservative side of things, but he is somebody who is extremely well known and very well respected in the media in the media world of the United States. All right. So, I mean, Alexander, to wrap it up, here are my thoughts, and then you can wrap it up. In the, previous video. the Democrats are telegraphing what they're about to do. I think the Democrats understand that Trump will win the Electoral College. I think they understand that. And I'm always going to preface this by saying, if the election is between Trump and Biden, because with Biden, you never know what's going to happen to the guy. Yeah. Maybe Hillary Clinton steps in. I don't know. But anyway, let's say Trump, Biden, the tele the, the Democrats understand Trump mm. will win. He will mm. win the Electoral College. They're anticipating a popular vote in favor of Biden. This is what they're anticipating. They don't yeah. see any other scenario. And they're telegraphing what's going to happen. They're yeah. telegraphing it. We've had a test run on protests. We've had a test mm. run. We've had a test run on governors defying the president. We've had a mm. test run on that in blue states. So mm. they've test run that as well. We've had a test run on the mainstream media propaganda. Mm. And we've had a test run on social media blackout and censorship. They've checked off everything needed to stage a coup. When you're mm. going to stage a coup, you want to make sure that you have full control of various levers of power, yes. the media, the internet, um, in this case, the states and the government legislative uh, branches mm -hmm. in countries. It may be the whole country. I think in, this, in the case of the U.S., the Democrats are looking at having power of the legislative policy branches of certain states, of specific states, which the governors control. The governors mm -hmm. act 
in those states as as the law, so they're going to control them. And of course, you want to get people out on the streets. I mean, this is textbook color revolution, and I think this think tank is telegraphing exactly what they're going to do when they get the results they are anticipating. They know Trump will win the Electoral College, but they believe a popular vote in favor of Biden, and that will be the springboard for the color revolution. Indeed, and I mean, or, or if they don't actually get a popular vote in favor of Biden, with, as I said, changing the, the, the voting system, they might, you know, they might achieve the appearance of one. I mean, this, right. this, seems, to me the, this seems to me the issue now. I mean, what is happening in the United States that these scenarios are even being discussed. I mean, this is, I mean, this is shocking. I mean, you know, the, 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 there are even people in the United States who talk about these scenarios it is alarming enough. But in the context of everything else that's been happening over the last four years, and which has happened especially this year, who can doubt that we are looking at a crisis in November starting to, you know, emerge I, I, I hope this can be averted in some way, but it seems to me that it's quite clear that there are some people who will never accept a Donald Trump victory. This is what this is all about. It's making that kind of victory impossible and preparing for a situation where if it happens, you overturn it. Because this is, you, you said that there were four scenarios. The other three scenarios clearly are not believed in. It's this fourth one that is the one that has really been uh, um, you exactly. know, looked exactly. into. The other three are just padding to conceal what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, and I'll stress it again. This is textbook coup playbook. I mean, I remember the coup in Turkey. It, it ran along the same lines, the oh. same type of playbook. But when you execute a coup, you got to make sure, you got to make sure that you check off everything. In the case of Turkey, they didn't check off the fact that they had to, that Erdogan managed to get through a message via CNN Turk, via the internet. They didn't shut communications down completely. Yeah. And it was that message that saved his government. It really yeah. was. You got to make sure you lock down everything if you're going to stage a coup. Yeah. It's it's critical that you do that. And I think the Democrats have been test running a lot of this stuff. And we've been seeing it in front of our eyes being test run. Yeah. Yes. I can I just say in any functioning country, if, if these things were not being, um, you know, th seriously considered, a think tank coming up with something like this would be a major scandal. People would be saying, you know, what are you talking about? This is insane. But, you know, that isn't happening. It's been published, of course, by people like Byron York. The very fact that people are not raising alarms about this shows to me that this is serious. Yeah. Great work mm -hmm. by Byron York. Oh, as Excellent always. Article. As always. As always. Mm -hmm. I'll put a link for that in the description box underneath this video. Yeah. Alexander McCurse, thank you very much. Guys, if you like this video, subscribe to our channel, share our channel, drop us a comment down below. We love to read your comments. Please donate to us on PayPal, Patreon, and subscribe star. You will find links for those platforms as well underneath this video. And your donation really helps us out a lot. It's your donations and your help that helps us to get stories like this out to you. And uh, ring those alarms. Ring those alarms because some sinister stuff is going on, Alexander. Some real sinister stuff is going on in those DC think tanks. And also go to the Duran shop, pick up some merchandise. We've got great new shirts, great apparel, new designs on everything. And of course, our new design showcases various country flags. I have okay. Serbia right here. I have the United States here with me because obviously we've just been talking about this. And, you know, what an amazing mug this is. And it's wonderful to see the American flag there and also the flags of so many other countries. I and mean, Serbia is no stranger. No, no, no. To not at all. A lot of lessons. Not at all. A lot of lessons to be learned. But I mean, disastrous if it now happens in the United States. And here's Australia, too. And you can find many, many others. But you're talking about an alarm, Alex. Let me also remind our viewers about our the Patriot Beacon made by our friends at the Patriotic Legacy in the United States. And of course, it's it's a flashlight, but Alex calls it the Swiss Army knife of flashlights because of course it's also got an alarm. So you can you can hear it, you can you can 
press it there and alarm you know alert people when you know you need to uh, and draw attention and by the way when i do that my dogs come running as um, one of them has just done by the way but there you go so it's also of course the best flashlight you can possibly have it's got an extraordinary powerful beam as you can see if you're in a dark uh, place inside your cellar you know in the woods um you know on the road wherever it's got a tremendous beam beautiful clear light you can see extraordinary detail incredibly long distances you've got lots of people around you well you can just see i've dimmed it now and if you want to alert people to where you are you're walking down a road the oncoming traffic you want to alert them that you're there well you can flash you can have it as a flash so it's an amazing wonderful flashlight but as well as being a flashlight and as well as having that alarm that i played at the beginning it is as alex has called it the swiss army knife of flashlights because it can do all kinds of other things firstly it's got a compass in the handle so if you get lost um, you have it there you can always find your way very quickly um, it's an amazing tool um, it's uh, you can use it as a hammer or if you have to you know break a windscreen to get somebody out well you can do that very quickly with this uh, with this um, hammer there and it's also got a seat belt cutter so you can cut them out of their seat belts too um, it's solar powered which is incredibly useful because you don't have to mess around with batteries and keep it recharged you can just leave it out in the sun and it charges itself uh, um, um, because it's solar powered and because it's solar powered if your uh, if your smartphone or your ipad or your um, laptop is um, you know down on you well you can recharge it there's a there's a port there but the thing i like most about this as part of it being amazing in every respect as a as a flashlight as a as a tool is it's just a beautiful thing it is so beautifully made it's so strong it's so rugged just holding it gives you confidence you know you just know that you have the best flashlight in the world in your hands and you do it just gives you that sense of quality and strength that these amazing products the united states produces uh, uh give and it's made by our friends the patriotic legacy um in the united states i believe in texas in the united states but it ships internationally you can have it anywhere in the world and at the end of this broadcast Alex will tell you how you can get yourself one and you absolutely need to do so because it's the best flashlight in the world. So we've talked about our mugs. I would also point out that Alex has been adding uh, to the um, our catalog of shirts, which you can also find in our shop. This is a new shirt that I'm wearing. You can see it's got the flag of the United Kingdom there, um, the country of which I'm a citizen and where I live. And you can find all sorts of other great things like hats, hoodies and stickers and ebooks. You can also find them in our shop. You can support us by uh, uh, buying these products from our shop and you can be the owner of these great things if you buy them from our shop. And as I said, if you buy yourself a Patriot Beacon, Alex will tell you how to do that too. So Alex, will uh, over to Alex and he can tell you how to do all these things. Mm -hmm. Remember when you go to the Patriot Patriotic Legacy site and you purchase that Patriot Beacon, use the code Duran20 to get a 20% discount at checkout. Duran20, you'll find all the information for the Patriot Beacon underneath this video in the description box. And also go to the DuranShop.com. You'll find the link for that as well underneath this video in the description box as well. Alexander Mercurius, thank you very much. Until next time, everybody, take care.